located in the most southern tip of New Jersey, Cape May was founded in 1761 and became one of America's first beach resorts. For years, people have been coming down here in the summer to enjoy its wildlife, Victorian homes, and attractions such as the Cape May County Zoo, the Cape May Point Lighthouse, the Emlyn Physic Estate, and downtown Cape May. Well, I think people primarily expect to see a Victorian city. Uh, Cape May is most famous for its Victorian architecture. It has the country's leading collection, over 600 seaside Victorian buildings, and that's what we're most famous for. But there's lots of other attractions here as well. Uh, we are an excellent restaurant town. We have terrific birding. We have terrific sport and commercial fishing. And interestingly enough, there are a growing number of wineries in Cape May as well. And then, of course, we have the things that all seashore towns have, a beach, and also we don't have a boardwalk. We have a seawall that people walk on the top of called the promenade. But that's what people come to Cape May for. They primarily come to Cape May because it has all the amenities of a seashore town, plus a lot of history and other things to do at the same time. But also in Cape May are three very weird attractions people just don't know about. I'm here at Sunset Beach, located at the end of Sunset Boulevard in Cape May, where there's a very weird attraction known as the Concrete Ship. Built by the Liberty Shipbuilding Company, the SS Atlantis, also known as the Concrete Ship, was one out of 12 concrete ships that were built during World War I. During the war, steel was running dangerously low, so the government had to think of another way to build ships, so they came up with the concrete ships. In the 1920s, we had a romance with concrete in this country, uh, primarily because there was a shortage of steel. In fact, the same thing that was, was true during, this was during, or right after the First World War. And there was a big shortage of steel after the First World War, and during it. So they tried to make these concrete ships. Doesn't make much sense to me. But uh, engineers assure me that if steel can float, concrete can float. But they proved to be impractical. Uh, they were too heavy, they used up most of their, they were cargo ships and they used up most of their cargo capacity and their own fuel. And <coughs> they were very easily cracked and when a concrete ship gets a crack, that's a big problem. If a wooden or metal ship gets a dent or a little tear in it, it can be fairly easily repaired, but not a concrete ship. The World War I emergency fleet originally was supposed to have 24 ships built, but they only had made 12. The SS Atlantis was launched on December 5, 1918, one month after the war was over. So they used it to transport American troops from Europe back home and later to transport coal from New England, and in 1920, the ship was sent to a salvage yard in Virginia. Then in 1926, a man named Jesse Rosenfield bought it to use for a ferry to take people from New Jersey to Delaware, but a storm on June 8, 1926, hit coast and the ship broke free and ran aground 150 feet off the coast of Sunset Beach where it still stands today. A gentleman had an idea to establish a ferry. There have been many of these plans uh, throughout oh, the 1800s and 1900s to have a ferry between here and Delaware. By the way, the ferry was not actually finally established until 1964. He was going to get three of these concrete ships and sink them at the end over there at Sunset Beach in the shape of a Y with the prongs of the Y facing out into the bay and that was going to be the ferry terminal. Well they brought the first one up from being in Moth Balls down the Chesapeake Bay. It was called the Atlantis. It was almost in position when it broke loose in a storm and sunk. And once it sunk, it was sunk and it's impossible to move now and is gradually disappearing. The length of the ship was 250 feet and weighed over 2,500 tons. 
Because the ship sat in the ocean water for such a long time, all that remains is a small piece of what was a warship experiment. Who owns the ship currently? I believe, I'm not 100% sure, but I am fairly certain it is owned by the people who run the complex of other shops out there called the Sunset Beach Shops. The name of the place where it's located is Sunset Beach. How long do you think it will take the ship to totally disappear? Well, if, they, if you look at a series of pictures between when it originally sunk in the, the middle 1920s and now, I'm going to guess another 20 years you won't be able to see it because you can see it gradually sinking, sinking less and less, and it breaks up more and more too as it sinks. What makes this concrete ship unique to Cape May? Just the very idea, number one, of concrete ships, that people are uh, astounded by the whole concept of concrete ships. And there aren't that many of them. There were only a little over a dozen ever made to start with. And of course, there it is right out there off the coast for people to see. And it's, uh, as far as I know, while there are still some in mothballs, as they call it, in, in kind of a storage area in the Chesapeake Bay, and a few others being used as breakwaters around the country, this is one of the very, very few concrete ships you can get any kind of sight of, although not much of it's left. I'm here at Cape May Point, the most southern tip of New Jersey. Alongside this beach is the Cape May Point Lighthouse and the Cape May Point Park. But also alongside this beach is the Cape May Point Bunker. Located in Cape May Point, Battery 223 was built in 1942 as a part of the 1940 Harbor Defense Program. It was originally 900 feet inland with the top of the structure at ground level. In the front of the bunker were 6 inch turrets and 155 millimeter guns. A sister bunker is located across the bay in Delaware. Is this bunker a tourist attraction of any kind or do people find out as they come and visit here? Indeed it is a tourist attraction. It's from World War II and it's part of a complex of coastal defenses that were designed to guard the mouth of the Delaware Bay from, uh, interestingly enough, a German either amphibious invasion or German surface ships off the coast or even an air raid. The name of the whole complex is called Fort Miles. The bunker is one part of it and there are in Cape May uh, two tall cylindrical towers that were lookout, or as they called them, fire control towers that aimed, if you will, the guns at the bunker. And uh, we've become in recent years much more aware of Cape May's vital role in World War II, and so more and more people are uh, visiting these, this one fire control tower that we've restored at the Mid-Atlantic Center and the bunker as well. Although you can't go in the bunker. You wouldn't want to go in the bunker. Believe me, I've been in there. It's very dirty and uh, full of germs and mold and everything else you can think of. It's just something to look at from the outside. The walls of the bunker are seven feet thick and below the structure are wooden pillars used to form the structure. Inside this bunker are many rooms used for storing guns and other artillery. After the war ended, the bunker was left abandoned and now just sits here at the beach of Cape May. In 2005, a beach replenishment project restored the sand around the bunker, allowing for people to get an up-close look at this bunker. The entrances have been recently cemented shut for fear of trespassers getting injured. Did the uh, city or any other sort of government officials talk or plan on removing this bunker from its beach? Not only, there was some talk of restoring it, but they would never move it. Uh, and probably will never restore it for two reasons. Uh, first of all, it would be unbelievably expensive, I mean multi, multi, multi millions of dollars to move it or restore it. And plus it sits right now, right in the middle 
of a very ecologically sensitive area. For most known, there are three very rare types of birds that breed nearby. Uh, the piping plover, the least tern, and the black skimmer. And they're very much endangered and very much protected so that even if we had all those millions of dollars to either move it or more likely restore it, we probably couldn't do it because of environmental regulations. Who owns this bunker? The city is based, uh, the bunker is basically part of Cape May Point State Park. And lastly, what makes this bunker unique to Cape May? It's one of the few yeah. remaining coastal artillery positions along the Delaware or on the New Jersey coast and a wonderful replica of World War II and a reminder of this area's vital role in World War II.